Bajaj Park. This is Bardwaj, and that is the Bajaj Chetak Electric. Yes, we are a little late on reviewing this electric scooter. That's because Bajaj has now finally given the scooter in Bangalore for us to review. So it is time for us to tell you how the scooter rides and how is the performance from that electric powertrain. Let's get started. The Bajaj Chetak was uh, launched in India back in January 2020 and since then it has not evolved much in terms of design and there have been no improvements made to the electric powertrain as well. But the pricing for this electric scooter is at 1.54 lakh X showroom and it is available in a couple of colors and the one that you see here certainly makes the scooter look good and premium as well that's because this scooter is placed in the premium electric scooter market and also rivals the aether 450x ola and the tvs iCube. so that was a quick recap on where the bajaj chetak is positioned now let us get into the design so design is one of the most talked about uh, aspect of the chetak electric uh, it hops back to the chetak scooter which was present earlier in the ic engine form uh, it has taken a lot of design cues from that and also it gets a retro looking body shape if you can see it from the side you can see the profile is a little bit on the retro side and you can see a teardrop kind of uh, shape at the back uh, where the rear body panel is but if you come to the front of the scooter you can spot the headlamp again it has got a halo led ring with an led uh, lamp right here and also the front apron of the scooter uh, gets a couple of lighting elements now what you see right here are the indicators and what you see right here is a piano black and a chrome trim finish just for styling and you also get a body colored uh, fender right here and that is about it in terms of uh, front design now as i said it is very much a retro looking uh, scooter and coming to the side as i mentioned earlier the retro look is even more pronounced and also there are a couple of features that i want to talk about coming to the instrument cluster right here even this has a retro look because it is circular in shape and it also is a complete led unit a backlit led unit and you get a telltale uh, lights all around that circular uh, instrument cluster and also the buttons that you see here are all piano black finished and a tactile touch uh, a press touch and press button now the quality of the button feels uh, really good and also you know it adds to the premiumness of the scooter and also the switch gear is backlit and you can easily figure out uh, where the switch gear uh, is when you want to operate it now speaking about the switch gear themselves uh, the left side cluster of switches include the lighting and also you get a horn and also you get an indicator for the left side uh, on the right side of the indicator is where all the modes are present there is a d which means the drive mode and this is a reverse where it says r and also here you get a button to release the glove box that is present right there and also you get a menu button uh, to toggle between uh, menu switches that is the, your trip meters and finally an indicator button as well now these are again if i can show you these are all hard press buttons now uh, let me also show you how the glove box is accessed as i mentioned earlier you just have to press on this button when the key fob is with you so here you get four liters of storage but sadly what happens is the right side of the glove box has uh, the battery that's the auxiliary battery that is present here and the left side of the glove box uh, takes up the charger that is onboard charger that is present on this scooter now the charger is something like this so it's a very portable charger and uh, you just have to open it up and there is a plug that goes into the socket and there is another uh, plug that just bolts onto your regular 5 amp socket so that can be stored here and if and apart from that there is actually not much space for storage in the glove box if you really need to store something you'll have to access the seat right here once you long press the same button the seat releases and you can hear that beep going on which says the seat is open uh, you get 18 liters of storage right here fitting a full face helmet will be difficult as you can see right here uh, it is something that cannot be done uh, we will have to reach out to a smaller helmet probably or a half face helmet 
uh, and also this is where the charging slot is present so if you flip it open this is where you can uh, slot it um, one issue is that uh, closing the seat while using a charging uh, slot is a little tricky uh, but that is how it is uh, and if you can spot a C right here that is actually a luggage hook once you press on it it will come back and it says capacity of 3 kilos so that is another uh, storage area right there and finally coming back to the rear design of the scooter you can spot that the tail lamps the LED tail lamps have been positioned just like how the front indicators are positioned on the apron it is vertically mounted and also you get indicators right here and the tail lamp right there it's a combination of both and also you get the similar styling which is there in the front apron even at the rear to sort of create that symmetry and you get chetak badging right here so that completes the look of the chetak now other convenient features that are present on the scooter are uh, you get a nice and very chunky grab handles unlike other scooters which has a flimsy uh, grab handle <coughs> ola and uh, you also get a side step right here uh, so you know if there is a person who is sitting uh, indian way of uh, sitting on a scooter when the side they also get a side step right there so good mark there for the chetak now that is about the design and features of the scooter now to start the scooter itself if you are wondering where is the slot to slot in the key it does not get a physical key instead what you get is a key fob right here now there is a single button now this is to recognize that the key fob has uh, it has a proximity sensor the scooter automatically recognizes and all you need to do is press on this button right here and the scooter handle will get unlocked and the scooter will also fire up let me show that so if you lock the scooter and if you just press long press on this the scooter will get switched off and if i move away from the scooter it will say no key fob since i'm near the scooter i can press on this unlock button where uh, you know the scooter recognizes the key fob is there and this is also used for uh, finding the scooter in parking lots as well but once the key fob is near the scooter all you have to do is long press on this so that's how the scooter will fire up so that is about the design and features and how you start the chetak electric now it is time to get on to the mechanicals and how the scooter rides now i've been riding the scooter for a couple of kilometers uh, i've done around uh, 100 150 kilometers uh before you know i could go ahead and give you a proper review uh in that what i found is among all the electric scooters chetak has one of the best uh, rider ergonomics is what i can say and that is clearly seen because as you know bajaj is one of the mainstream manufacturers and certainly their area of expertise uh in uh, developing a proper rider ergonomics has come into play with the chetak uh you sit well within the scooter and it is very much like riding any other uh, scooter uh, you get a wide seat uh, for the rider and pillion also gets a very comfortable area to sit in and also uh, your knees are not that high up or even uh, touching the handlebar so that it becomes a pain while taking a sharp uh, turns with that i will also get on to the par train uh, now the par train uh, this gets a 2.8 uh almost 2.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack with that it is paired to a 3.8 uh, kilowatt hour uh, hub mounted rear hub mounted uh, motor now the peak power for that motor is rated at 4 kilowatt and uh, the peak torque is rated at 20 newton meter around 2000 rpm and also uh, speaking of the performance itself the scooter i would not say it is outright quick uh, but it certainly has that uh, performance of an electric scooter where the torque kicks in very early and you know uh, you are getting 20 newton meter torque at 2000 rpm which is a good performance uh, coming out from the scooter but where i think it could have been better or can be improved is in terms of range probably this can have a bigger battery pack to offer a range of above uh, 100 kilometers that's the true world range right now uh, from our test figures when we tested the scooter we got the scooter to run around uh, uh, 80 85 kilometers on eco mode and sport mode nearly around 70 kilometers on a single charge and also this does not come with any sort of fast charging as i mentioned the charger that you get 
along with the scooter that is the only way to charge but again uh, that is also sort of a convenience because if you can find a 5 amp plug anywhere you can just charge the scooter it takes around 5 hours to completely charge the scooter from 0 to 100% and with that coming back to the performance there is another niggle in the scooter that I want to highlight which can sort of work out for you if you are a sort of a rider uh, so what happens with the scooter is if you are riding the scooter in eco mode uh, it will be in eco mode but if you twist the throttle it will automatically switch to the sport mode now that is indicated on the instrument cluster and also via an audio beep that uh, is given to you by the scooter now what happens is if you are eking out the scooter and want to get maximum range out of it uh, unknowingly you might start riding on the sport mode uh, for that you will have to keep checking your instrument cluster or keep here hearing that audio beep audio alert uh, now that is something that i feel could have been done better where the scooter is forcefully uh, you know limited uh, to eco mode so that um, the maximum range of around 80 to 85 is uh, delivered per charge uh, now that again you will have to pay attention to while you're riding but how i think that can be an advantage is let's say if you are riding in eco and you want to immediately overtake another vehicle you will have to just twist the throttle and the scooter will deliver that sport mode power to you so that is about the performance and also the top speed of the scooter is limited to 65 km per hour again that is a number that can be improved on further iterations of the scooter I think Bajaj will be updating the scooter soon because it's already been two years since its launch and it is due for an update against its rivals that have received uh, updates from time and time again. Also in terms of connectivity options, uh, the Chetak will be offered uh, in future with a connected application. There is a My Chetak app where you can pair your uh, scooter to your smartphone. Uh, right now that feature is not available yet but uh, since this is a 4G enabled scooter, uh, that option will be given at a later date. However, I am unsure when Bajaj will roll that feature out. Now, coming to the ride quality of the scooter, as I mentioned earlier, since the rider ergonomics is so good on the scooter, the suspension setup also is a traditional setup indeed because it gets a trailing suspension at the front and a single gas shock absorber at the rear. The suspension setup is slightly tuned towards the softer side which will help in city maneuvering and uh, city travel because as we know this is a scooter made for the urban environment and Bajaj has very well made sure that it is uh, according to the Indian uh, road conditions and you get a plush ride on the scooter feels very well built as well in two up riding as well you will not have any issues in terms of performance or in terms of suspension setup the scooter also has hill hold assist so in case if you are on an incline if you leave the brake it will hold the scooter for you and help you in tackling that incline in a safe manner and as I mentioned earlier it does certainly gets a plus ride quality and feels very well put together now finally coming to the brakes and tires uh, these run on 12 inch wheels 90 by 90 section tires at both ends tubeless of course and it gets disc brake at the front and uh, a drum brake at the rear now braking performance is also adequate uh, you get region braking as well as and when you go off the throttle the region braking comes in and it uh, starts to slow the scooter down there is no adjustment for the region braking yet there is only one mode uh, but probably in future we can expect Bajaj to give a region braking on this and on that note braking is also on point and not much uh, to talk about there so that was our take on the Bajaj Chetak electric now as I mentioned earlier for the price the performance that is being offered by the scooter could have been better because all of its rivals which are priced similarly offer a better performance as a better package now Bajaj I think will continue to work on their electric scooter segment and in the days to come Chetak will definitely have an update where it is offered with a bigger battery pack and also better performing uh, electric powertrain and also better features and better connectivity options as well but for now what did you think about the Chetak electric would you choose the Bajaj electric scooter over other premium electric scooters present in the Indian market? Let us know in the comments below. Also like and share this video and do subscribe to DriveSpark if you haven't done it already. This is Bharadwaj and that is the Bajaj Chetak Electric. Signing off. See you in the next video.